I'm with a company called Bebop Technology. Um, here, who here knows the word Bebop? Yeah, I figured in this room. I think somewhere in uh, Iowa, maybe people wouldn't know Bebop. It's a frenetic, fast-paced uh, jazz style, very improvisational. I think if you take a look at what everybody's experiencing, the G-force of everybody going through the changes in our industry, uh, it's a lot like bebop. It's very frenetic, it's very fast-paced, it's very unpredictable. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is some new concepts, and to present that concept, I've got two stereotypical customers. That was a laugh, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is the idea that we've got a couple of young filmmakers. Do Netflix love your vegan egg angst indie feature? They have a deal, so obviously we have a filmmaker. But we don't have access to the systems. What are we going to do? So the idea is if we're cutting, a person started out making a movie, they were working on perhaps some makeshift systems at a lot they're working on or the school they're working at. There are many scenarios in which people wake up one day without the equipment they had the day before. Many people have moved from working on these giant systems, as we all know, these million-dollar post-production or production environments, to very flexible, powerful environments. This is the next step in that thinking. Is the guy going to buy a giant editing system? Is he or she going to rent a system? Are there any other options? So this is the part where we actually mimic a television show and nail the dialogue unnecessarily. So this talks about Bebop the solution. Bebop is an online cloud solution. It can be accessed anywhere from any, basically any device, although we assume you'll be using a computer or a zero client. A zero client is one of those devices that has a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse, but no hard drive. That's an important part of the security solution, as you can imagine. So the idea is Bebop will allow you to drive an Avid or a Premier editing system in the beginning, lots of solutions after that, in the cloud from any device you're on completely securely. So theoretically and practically, there are two ways that we'll execute that process. Theoretically, you'll be able to go online, pop your credit card in, sign up for 16 hours, of editing on your Avid or your Premier workstation. You'll have a very powerful workstation in the cloud. You'll have whatever computer you want in your home. You'll roll that credit card and you'll start editing. We'll get the content up to the cloud using Aspera or any of the other solutions. Aspera is bundled with the Bebop software. <coughs> so you obviously are getting the idea. Cloud is one of those things that in the other part of the industry, the other parts of the world, has been very successful. In entertainment business, not so much. So we took on that challenge directly. We take security for content as a serious thing. I have a background as a content creator. And though I know I want as many people to watch it as possible, monetizing it still matters. And getting the filmmakers the ability to make a living by creating content is still an important priority. Um, I was joking with someone that I am old enough to have run the cranks to cut picture and sound, but uh, I have not made a living at it. I'm happy to say I was too young to be editing on a flatbed. But I think we all, many of us, I should say, have lived through the transitions from mechanical editing to nonlinear editing, from three networks, all the cliches. So I'm not going to bore you guys with all those details. I think that the important thing to say today, and I want to stress this, is it's about empowering the individual. It's about empowering the individual to be a creative without boundaries. It's about empowering the individual that can be J.J. Abrams or it can be someone we've never heard of. Their needs are actually the same. When J.J. sits down in an editorial system, he needs to have a synchronicity. When he does a cut, it needs to be there. When he looks at his material, he's got to know it well, and he's got to know where the beat of those cuts are. <clears throat> However, 
that need, that desire, that intuitive creative process is the exact same thing for the Martin Scorsese's of the world and the Mar Marty Kaufman's of the world. And I think the thing we want to stress at Bebop is we're trying to empower the individual over a long evolution. We don't think today is the inflection point for the future of the industry. We don't think there's an event that makes everyone go, holy cow, we've got to get off of this hardware. Perhaps the Sony hack was a significant milestone in maybe making people think about this, but I think it's an evolution. I think everything creatively has been an evolution. It feels dramatic, it feels powerful when the change comes because there's so many things to learn. But when we went from film to digital, when we went from film cameras to digital cameras, when we went to digital capture on location services, all of those processes required really getting creative buy-in and re really getting financial buy-in in that order. Many of us, certainly on the business side, would like to tell our compatriots on the creative side how to do their work. And many of us on the creative side would rather get run over by a car than be told how to process their creative thoughts. We don't think that they're mutually exclusive. We believe that Bebop Technology is the first of many, many companies that will empower the individual creative. Today, the first product we're bringing along is editorial, partially because we know how to make it work and partially because that is probably the most commonly used platform in the industry. We have the ability to make it secure and we have the ability to make it powerful because of our partner, Teradici. There are many solutions that are going to be coming on the market, but the most powerful one in our opinion today is the PC over IP solution. I'm going to avoid tech talk. That's the only techie kind of thing I'm going to try to say today. It is the idea that we can control elegantly the computer and the cloud in ways we've never been able to before. Rolling video, interactivity through an 8-bit streaming video you actually have no ability to grab the content, and pull it down to your desktop. Teradici's solution along with Bebop, we think is the most secure solution in the marketplace. As a creative, and I'll, I'll change hats all the way through our chat. As a creative, I must have flexibility to cut any time, any place. And the reason why for me as a creative is because the moment that I get the perfect idea to cut that scene, doesn't just come in a 8 by 10 office. It isn't just that it'd be cheaper. It isn't just that it'd be more convenient. It's more creative, folks. It's much more creative to be able to cut on an ocean. There's a reason why painters paint beautiful scenes. There's a reason why editors are stuck in small rooms, because it hasn't been easy to put them anywhere. This solution actually uses a pretty modest 15 to 20 megabyte line, which is most of you have in your home. Most of us have in our homes. In fact, most of us have better connectivity in our homes than our offices. It allows you to use that line, use any laptop, PC or Mac, I suppose Linux too, and it allows you to work on a very powerful computer remotely on an hourly fee, right? Figure 10 bucks an hour plus storage. Now, I'm certainly happy to talk about the financial reasons to go to this solution. Uh, there's a reason why everyone else is also talking about going to the cloud. It seems like real estate has made an intrusion into the creative process. It seems like real estate is dictating what physical lots we're on. It feels like real estate is dictating people moving into smaller environments, using less power. It seems like the EPA and the heat requirements and the air conditioning requirements, all those things are conspiring together to change the environments that we've all been working in. And I think working from home today doesn't mean what it meant even five years ago. I think there was a quite, a big, quite a bit of hubbub when Marissa Mayer said, everyone's got to come to the office at Yahoo. That's not going to happen in Hollywood. Our office is wherever that camera is rolling. Our office is wherever those actors are acting. We would like to say that where the tax credits are, 
will place the production to get the most benefit. But the truth is, where Scorsese says that's where his editor will go, or her edi the editor, he or she will go, that's where they'll go. What we try to make sure of is that wherever the editor or the creative works, they use the same work process and the same tools. Now, I'm going to skip over this slide, other than to say it makes financial sense. But I wish I could tell you that things in Hollywood were driven through financials. Maybe I wish that, maybe I don't, but they're not. I was having an interesting conversation. There are many people in this town, and I respect 95% of them, that will say, our work process is fine. We are absolutely doing the work the way we want to do it. Thank you very much. You guys are fabulous. Go back to your computer hut. Go back to your IT stations and go back the way you came. And then, and this always happens, one of us gets to one of the creatives. And the director goes, wait, 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 wait. You mean I can cut anywhere? Literally anywhere. Yeah. And you mean my editor doesn't have to sit in the friggin' bay for 16 hours? Yeah, that's right. I don't care what the producer says. I want to do it. At that moment, the producer does the Snoopy dance. We save money. The, the goal, I think, for Bebop is not just to save money. The goal is not just to empower creative individuals. It's to empower the entire industry to continue to expand. YouTube from the bottom up and independent production from the bottom up have always, the past, say the past 20 years, pushed the creative envelope. It doesn't matter the length of a YouTube video. It matters the freshness of the idea. It doesn't matter the length of the motion picture. It matters the freshness of the idea. So our goal, inevitably, is to empower creatives all over the world, not just in Los Angeles, and to collaborate together all over the world, not just in Los Angeles. We hope this little scene plays out in our lifetime. I'm confident that it will. It's the idea that the future creatives will not be bound by their financial wherewithal, but only by their imaginations. That's why I moved to Los Angeles. I think that's why a lot of you guys moved into Los Angeles. That's why you moved into these industries. Because there's a risk taker in these industries. There's a vision in these industries that will migrate through everything else we do. Content creation today is going from monolithic studios to empowered individuals. And I acknowledge a lot of those individuals are working for the studios. But the relationships are very, very different. The, it used to be, and I'm going to say this and forgive me for saying it this way, there used to be a little slavery in our industry. There used to be a little slavery. And I say a little because maybe I'm cheating. Who in this room has been told, you can go home after six hours, no problem? Uh, who's been told, listen, we need you to work late tonight, but do your kids have a PTA meeting? Because if they do, it's no, no issue. There's slavery in our business. This is the unbounding of those chains. This says you will go and send your editor to the PTA, and then when they get home that night, they'll do the fix just like they promised. It says that the director, who absolutely understands what he wants to do or she wants to do, will cut it themselves. J.J. Abrams cuts most of the main titles from the movies he does. Not because he can't hire good people, but because he's a creative. And he wants to do it when he wants to do it, where he wants to do it, and why he wants to do it. Bebop technology is just the tip of the iceberg. Obviously, by the way I'm saying this, I believe that everybody in this room is going to empower the individual. That may not be the intention, but that will be the result. And in the end, this industry will recreate itself in a spectrum of content the likes of which I don't think any of us can imagine. Virtual reality and all the rest, augmented reality, devices that allow us to see things that are not in the room. In the future, I'll be doing a head-up display without a screen floating above my head. At those moments, at those times, these solutions will allow everyone to have a chance to participate. 
The filmmakers in Los Angeles, many of them came here because they couldn't do what they wanted to do in Michigan. And they couldn't do what they wanted to do in Oslo. Let's break those boundaries down. Let's unbridle the creative opportunities. Let's empower the individual. That is my speech for today. Any questions? Bruce, fantastic. Thank you. How do you get started? How do you, when you meet someone, how do you help them figure out how to make that big jump? Uh, the good news is if you can cut on an Avid or you can cut on a Premiere, you can use Bebop. The workflow, I take great pride in this. We take great pride in this. Um, the workflow is identical to the existing workflow. We don't ever want to tell a creative person how to do their process or how to do their work. So the quick answer is we will be online and you'll buy a minimum and it'll probably be like 16 hours and that'll be within 60 days. In the short run, uh, the studios and the production companies and the powers that be at the cable companies and all the rest, we're making our way around and trying to provide them all the solutions. Understand though, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm very proud of this. This is not a barrier to entry. This is removing the barrier to entry. If you can cut and you can get your content on Aspera, you're in business. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Bruce. Uh, Diana Totter from Pix. Nice to meet you. You too. Um, you had, in one of your slides, it said that you are delivering directly from Bebop, and I was wondering if you could talk about that. Sure. Um, we have the ability, there are, I'm sure many of you have heard in code.com, there are many cloud solutions that allow you to transcode and do processes like transcoding and versioning. So we have uh, put that into the suite of tools that we provide, and it's simply a with Aspera and some of our other partners, which hopefully will be you guys. Um, we will be facilitating access to the transport tools and the versioning tools on the cloud. So as an example, you know, we'll cut the show, the editor finishes it, now he needs to do an output in H.264, H.265. Within that suite, we pull up the VitaSpine Vita solution and we'll encode it and then send it along on Aspera for delivery. It's, uh, it's working collaboratively as in, with a suite of tools on the desktop rather than having to connect, send it around and send it back and bring it forth and bring it back. The idea fundamentally behind Bebop, I probably should have said this sooner, is having the content hold still and everyone come to the content, right? Having the mountain hold the content and have everyone talk to the mountain. The logic of that, of course, is there's less risk when you move it around. We also think that provides the most flexibility. Any other questions? Can you talk to me about um, your provisioning of access on various devices for uh, things like dailies or test edits? Some, um, you know, I have George Clooney is in in Skipple and he needs to see some sort of edit. How you're set up to securely get to various clients and uh, how you're optimizing it for limited bandwidth situations. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, was, was that a softball? Yeah, that was a softball. I'd say that was a softball. Um, so repeat his question, make sure everybody understood it. How do we empower collaboration? And how do we make sure that we can do that with a limited bandwidth that's, that's at various hotels and locations that aren't a very large facility? The, I'm going to answer the second question first. Uh, bandwidth, as I said, we use 15 to 20, 25 tops, megs. The reason why is Teradici is streaming the desktop. The content is not moving. I always like to say if you've seen those little uh, toys that have the little pins and you put your face and it has an outline of your face, that's the way it's streaming. If you were to capture that stream, all you'd get is a bunch of pixels. You wouldn't get an image that you could steal. It's been an accepted solution in, in this town for quite some time. What we've done is in integrated into the software. Now to answer the second question, how do we collaborate and do simultaneous sessions, we don't. We don't. We allow our partners, for instance, like Pix, to interact with the content. And it is exactly the same as an editorial system today. So we have tools that can help them collaborate, but they're, they're not simultaneous. So this is actually a different question. I'm not okay. talking about George Clooney collaborating. I'm talking about a director getting George Clooney's approval. So and George is in an airport in Amsterdam, and he wants to look at it on his phone. 
are you providing that solution? I would say PICS and DAX and many of our friends provide pretty wonderful solutions to that. So I think, and, and I hope I'm answering your question and not driving you nuts, but the fundamental way we approach it is just the way we, so we finish the cut and then we post it and then they give, so it's, it, it actually is just taking the place of the edit system and the platform allows us to migrate any of those other systems into the suite. So we're not, we are an enabling software company. I'm sorry? You're not in that space, you're in a different space. Yeah, yeah, we're exactly, we're in the enabling space. Thank you, not the, not the media asset management or processing space, yeah. And, and I should say, our roadmap is to do the processes and services that we all know and to allow our partners to help us collaborate. So certainly, you know, color correction and visual effects and all that stuff is on the roadmap. Any, yeah, go ahead. So Mark Yes, Bereni from Colorfront. So how do you secure the footage that you upload uh, and what sort of storage you keep it on? And that might be the more expensive compared to the 10 hour editing price that you have to keep for two months, uh, terabytes of storage. So I think the question was, uh, how do we handle the versioning and what do we do? How do we store all the footage from the project? How do you secure it? How do we? Security. Security. How do we secure it? Thank you. OK, the thank you. The security of I'm the sorry. uploaded Forg footage. Forgive me for not understanding. Um, the answer is we uh, allow Amazon, SoftLayer, Azure, and Google to secure it. We think they're a lot better at that than we are. That's one of the fundamentals that we, that we use. We don't do our own cloud. Um, so the way we ingest is through Aspera, and the most secure way that we configure the system is the system is based in the cloud, does not have an internet port in the room, and does not have an internet port in the cloud. So you have a direct line streaming the content, and we, if we ingest, we actually use Zadara storage, if we ingest directly from Zadara hardware in the cloud, rather than uplinking it through Aspera, if we do that, it is actually in my opinion, or our opinion, the most secure solution. So in that way, the content never moves. We actually do a hard ingest at the cloud so it doesn't travel over the internet. And I think the most secure way to do it is to not have internet access. Now, in an editorial environment, as you all know, you'll occasionally want to do a placeholder for stock footage or something. In those scenarios, we assume that the assistant station will have, that's in the room, will probably have access to the internet. But there's I think the reality for us is the internet and the public cloud are not the same thing. And for us, working with the, and we're cloud agnostic, working with the cloud, <laughs> though it's the obvious next step, it's really about being secure. It's really about being collaborative and secure. So if there's another solution that comes along, along in the next three minutes or three years, that lends itself to a more secure, dynamic model in the cloud, we'll do that. Eric, thank you very much.